the more you eat foods that are, have a high glycemic load, the more you put fat on the body. Because foods that are high in glycemic load promote the secretion of insulin by the beta cells in the pancreas. So the more, the more high glycemic foods you eat, the more insulin that's produced. And insulin is the primary fat storage hormone. The more insulin produced, the more fat you put on your body. So the word glycemic means how much glucose enters the bloodstream after you eat that food. And a food has a higher glycemic load if a lot of sugar or glucose enters the bloodstream in the first hour after eating the food. So I can eat a food like, you know, a high glycemic food like potatoes or rice or cake will enter the bloodstream within 10 or 15 minutes. You can eat white rice or a croissant and those, those carbohydrates will turn into sugar and into your bloodstream within 10 or 15 minutes. No different had you had cotton candy, candy corn, or a cube of sugar. It's the same thing when you eat a piece of pizza or when you eat a bagel as you have a piece of candy. No difference because the sugar is broken down so rapidly, it floods the body with a high amount of glucose in a short period of time, and the response is a heightened amount of glucose. As a heightened amount of glucose, yeah, but a heightened amount of insulin responds in, in, in response to the high amount of glucose. And insulin tells the fat cells to grow. And insulin is angiogenesis promoting. Do you know what the word angiogenesis means? It means the promotion of new blood vessels to grow. So new blood vessels grow in the body to feed the fat cells, because fat cells can't grow, they're living tissue. They need blood vessels to grow into them so they can grow. And they need more glucose and more oxygen and more nutrients to keep growing. Cancer cells secrete out hormones that are angiogenesis promoting to tell the body to grow new blood vessels into them to, so they can grow and multiply. Without angiogenesis, cancer can't spread or grow on the body. Without angiogenesis, fat can't grow on the body either. But certain foods don't let angiogenesis happen and make fat very hard to grow. We're going to learn about that today. And certain foods promote angiogenesis, promote fat growth, and promote cancer, and promote heart disease because heart disease is predominantly a disease of fat storage. It's predominantly a disease of fat being stored on the exterior wall and the interior walls of your blood vessels. Now, low glycemic carbohydrates may be something like beans or squash or peas or nuts and seeds. But you see, when foods rush into the bloodstream very rapidly, when foods enter the bloodstream very rapidly, it doesn't just shoot these hormones up that make fat grow. It also signals hormones in the brain, especially dopamine, which turn people into food addicts. Makes people, it gives people a central nervous system high, so to speak, as if you had taken opiates or snorted cocaine. When the calories are flooded in very rapidly, people get intense amount of, like a, a drive to keep overeating and they can't put it down, they can't stop the potato chips. They want to keep finishing that bowl of ice cream. They want to eat it until they overeat because they're now a drug addict. Because foods, because these foods enter the bloodstream so unnaturally fast, they create a drug-like effect. So an example of these high glycemic foods are things like white rice and white potato, but of course, as you know, things that are sugary sweet, like honey and maple syrup, right, and agave nectar and all these sweetened things, these high glycemic carbohydrates, some of them, some of these sweeteners people use, even if they don't have a lot of calories in them, even though they're artificial or lower calorie sweeteners, still send signals to the brain and still send signals to the pancreas to produce insulin, even when they're not raising the blood sugar, and they still make you want to crave and make you a food, a sugar addict, even if they're not putting calories in. They still make you want to eat more sweets. You become a sugar holic and a sugar addict, whether you have um, artificial non-caloric sweeteners or whether you eat the real stuff. It's all the same thing. Whereas most natural foods have a moderate glycemic load, except for you know, beans and squashes and nuts and fruit have a very low glycemic load of these foods, especially foods like berries and melons and citrus fruit and beans and squashes and peas and root vegetables. In any case, if we looked at most of the carbohydrate foods that people eat and put them on a hierarchical scale of quality, we can look at what 
carbohydrates have the high, highest glycemic load and put a scale. And we could look at a, we could put fiber and we can see, well, how, which carbohydrates have more fiber and which have less. Because the more fiber the carbohydrate has, the lower its net carbohydrates. In other words, the more fiber it has, the slower the glucose is going to be absorbed into the bloodstream, making the glycemic load. So if you weigh its, its amount of grams of carbohydrate or grams of sugar and amount to the grams of fiber, the sugar is balanced by the fiber. Sugar without fiber is more glycemic. Sugar with more fiber is less glycemic. Did you follow that? So we consider that. We consider how much fiber is in the food. And also we consider the type of starch, whether it's slowly digestible starches or rapidly digestible starches, and whether they have resistant starch present. And beans have the most slowly digestible starches. When you eat things like beans and chickpeas and lentils, they're absorbed into your bloodstream over three to four hours, not over three to four minutes. When you take a teaspoon of, of oil, like olive oil or flaxseed oil or coconut oil, it enters your bloodstream in three to five minutes. What happens when all the calories rush in that fast? Well, it doesn't, can't burn it for energy. It has to store it as fat. And it stores it for fat within minutes. They say it goes from the lips to the hips within three to five minutes. <laughs> they even have technology today. We can look at the electron microscopes. We can cut a biopsy of people's waist or their butt. And we can see where the fat came from by looking at the structure. We can say, look at that, that's pig fat. You must have just ate that yesterday. There it is, right on your butt. <laughs> the body doesn't even change it. It just stores it as it is. The fat goes in. However, when you take fat in the form of something like a walnut or a sesame seed or a whole nut or seed, it's absorbed over three to four hours and your body preferentially burns the fat in the bloodstream for energy. It doesn't store it as fat when it comes in very slowly. We're talking here about the difference between calories being bolused in. The word bolus means it's like injected in all at one time within minutes versus like taking an IV drip and setting to one drop in every 30 seconds. So you take like three to four hours to get it into you. When you eat beans, you see where it says resistant starch and fiber, how high it is. When you eat lentils and navy beans and black beans and red kidney beans and azuki beans, those calories are absorbed so rapidly because a large percent of those calories are resistant to enzymatic degradation. That means that the starches in the beans can't be broken down by the enzymes. So what happens to them if they can't be broken down? They get fermented by bacteria. You actually, when you eat beans regularly, you develop bacteria that helps digest them. But the bacteria that breaks down the starches doesn't do it in the stomach. It does it in the distal portion of the small intestines and the proximal portion of the large intestines. Distal means all the way at the end. Proximal means, so it's, it's happening very far down in the digestive tract. So 90% of the calories that are resistant starch that are converted now into fat, I said that correctly, I'm saying that the bacteria convert the starch and beans into fat. Buta, short-chain fatty acids that have anti-inflammatory effects and protect against diabetes. But the fat calories that are formed from the breakdown of the beans don't get absorbed into the bloodstream. They produce more fat in the toilet bowl because they're formed so far down in the digestive tract the body can't absorb it all. Did you follow that? The more beans you eat, the more fat you have in the toilet. More fat in the toilet means less fat on you. You understand that? <laughs> Something else is happening here. Because the bacteria that develop in your digestive tract, because you're a regular bean eater, those bacteria have special properties that slow the absorption of glucose into the bloodstream from other foods that are not beans. So now when you had a mango for breakfast, the mango isn't as glycemic because you're the regular consumer of beans. So here you're seeing that beans are the most favorable. They're, they're highest in nutrients, they're highest in fiber, they're highest in slowly digestible starches, and they're highest in resistant starches as well. And the second meal effect means even at meals when you're not eating beans, you're benefiting from the beans. Because when you eat a diet with greens and beans, you form a thickening of the bacterial biofilm. It's called a microbiome that thickens and adheres to your villi, those finger-like projections that line the digestive tract. 
And that thickened biofilm lining the, the, covering the digestive tract lining, or the villi, those finger-like projections, slows the glucose, reduces the glycemic load of everything you eat, not just the beans, any part of the day. So I have these two raw foods I want you to eat every day. And I have these two cooked foods I want you to eat every day. And here's a magic secret. Don't tell anybody this. It's a magic secret. You eat these two raw foods and these two cooked foods every day, and it thickens the biofilm. And it makes you lowers the glycemic effect dramatically because there's more bacteria that live in your digestive tract than there are cells in the whole body. Matter of fact, there's about, five, there's about five to ten times as much bacteria in the digestive tract than there are cells in the whole body. And these bacteria produce nutrients. And these bacteria have biological effects and have anti-inflammatory effects and have lifespan, expanding, lifespan enhancing effects. And you, can, and you can have bad bacteria that's shortening your life because you're eating the like, sweet and meat diet. Or you can have these good bacteria that lengthen your life and make you thin. They actually do studies where they do fecal transplants of people eating a healthy diet. And they put the feces of people into the person eating an unhealthy diet. And they lose weight easier because they have that better bacteria in their gut. I'm not recommending that. I'm just saying that ha that, that's a, something scientists are experimenting with. People will do anything to lose weight, right? Except for eating right. Imagine they'll do a fecal transplant, but they won't, they'll have, <laughs> so they don't have to eat, and they'll have their stomach cut open, they'll have their heart cut open, they'll have chest, right? They'll have a bypass surgery, they'll have gastric bypass, they'll have lap bands, they'll do anything. They'll wear like, they'll take, they'll take pills to make themselves get sick. They'll wear belts that'll give them shocks. They'll take needles in there. They'll do anything, but they, instead of eating right, it's crazy. It just shows you how addicting food is, right? So now we're talking about these secret foods. We're talking about raw green vegetables and raw onion as the two magical raw foods, like raw cruciferous greens, like kale and bok choy and cabbage and watercress and arugula and broccoli. We're talking about those raw greens with raw onion or scallion that activate these bacteria, these healthy bacteria to form in your gut, mixed with the, the cooked foods of beans and mushrooms. When you eat a diet that contains the two raw, raw greens and raw onion or scallion, and you have cooked beans, and cooked mushrooms, you fully fuel the development of these adherent and healthy microbiome, the bacteria that protect your health and keep you thin. You've got to eat these secret foods. You don't have to do a fecal transplant. 